The Ark. A massive installation, one of the biggest ever made by the Forerunners, the Forge of the Halos, and a sanctuary from their fire. This installation is one that has constantly found itself at the center of conflict, and will so again in Halo Wars 2. Following the Human Forerunner War around 106,445 BCE, the Forerunners discovered a horrible truth. During the war, humanity had claimed they were simply running from another threat, a shaping sickness they called the Flood. As it turned out, the Flood was all too real, and now the Forerunners had to find a way to combat them, should they ever return. A thousand plans would be tried and failed, until the final solution, the Halos, would be fired to eliminate the Flood and their food source. The Ark was constructed to serve as a repair and activation installation for the Halo Array, though it would also serve other functions such as building replacement Halos and storing the collected species for the conservation measure enacted by the Librarian. Unknown to most, there have actually been two Arcs. The original Ark, later known as the Greater Ark, was a massive installation with six arms and created Halo rings of 30,000 kilometers in diameter. These rings fired laterally in a conical shape, rather than omnidirectionally like the final rings. These original rings also featured a much larger effective range and could be tuned to fire at a much smaller range. While the original array would serve the purpose it was designed for, the Master Builder, leader of the Forerunner Builder Raid and mastermind behind the Halos, recognized their operational shortcomings and commissioned a second set of rings, which would have their own forge, their own arc. This second arc, known as the Lesser Arc or Installation 00, was considerably smaller and created rings of 10,000 kilometers in diameter. While these smaller rings only had a 25,000 light year static firing radius, the smaller size of the halos allowed them to be moved around much more efficiently, a major flaw in the original array. The second arc and second array, composed of six rings rather than 12, were constructed in secret and kept at a location known only to the Master Builder. Around 97,745 BCE, 300 years before the firing of the Halos, the Flood re-emerged in the Milky Way. For 300 years, the Forerunners fought. A thousand plans were tried and failed to contain and eliminate the Flood. A few years before the end, 11 of the 12 Halos were gathered at the Forerunner capital in order to explore other options against the Flood and take the Master Builder to trial over numerous crimes. The 12th Halo had been lost for the previous 43 years. However, it suddenly appeared, commanded by the Contender-class AI Mendicant Bias, who had aligned himself with the Flood, and a battle broke out. Five of the seven Halos were fired, killing much of the Forerunner leadership, and the battle resulted in the destruction of all but two of the original Halo rings. One ring would successfully escape to the Greater Arc, going on to be called Omega Halo. The second ring would be recovered by the Isodidact, the Forerunner military leader. Though damaged from the Battle of the Citadel, the installation was able to shed its damaged sections, reforming into a 10,000 km diameter ring, and later being integrated into the final array as Installation 07. In 97,445 BCE, the Forerunner Ecumene was on its last legs. The remains of Forerunner government were gathered at the Greater Arc as they prepared for a final stand against the Flood and the firing of the array. Specimens once stored on the Greater Arc had either been moved to the Lesser Arc or to the nearby Omega Halo. Unfortunately, the Greater Arc soon came under attack by the Flood, the location of the installation given to it by Mendicant Bias. Utilizing precursor technology, notably things known as Star Roads, the Greater Arc and Omega Halo were destroyed by the Flood along with much of the remaining Forerunner Ecumene. Among the survivors was the Isodidact, who had been saved by Monitor Chalkus. They retreated to the Lesser Arc, Installation 00, the location of which had been revealed to the Isodidact only moments before the Greater Arc's destruction. Meanwhile, the Librarian and a lifeworker named Chantagreen hurried to Earth to retrieve new human specimens to replace those that had recently been lost. When the Isodidact arrived at the Arc, he began the final preparations for activating the Halo Array. The monitors for each installation were gathered for final index distribution, after which they were given new names and assigned to their Halos. Monitor Chakas, once a human and a close friend of the Isodidact, was given the designation 343 Guilty Spark, assigned to Installation 04 Alpha Halo, and had many of his memories locked away. Installation 07 having already been deployed, the remaining rings were distributed throughout the galaxy. The Isodidact then went to the Ark Citadel to prepare for array firing. Before that, however, he discovered that the Librarian had remained on Earth, sending only Chantagreen and her human specimens back to the Ark. 
the Librarian had begun construction on a portal to the Ark, one intended for humans to use in the distant future when they'd be ready to take up the mantle of responsibility. She also intended to try and distract the Flood, buying any time she could for the Isodidact. He was also informed that Mendicant Bias was preparing a final assault. Another Contender-class AI, Offensive Bias, was given a fleet smaller by comparison to try and stall Mendicant and the Flood. And then, the Array fired. Destructive energy swept through the galaxy, destroying the nervous systems of any life forms infected by the Flood or any that could potentially be infected. On worlds the Librarian and her life workers had visited, a salute dissolved the now-dead bodies to avoid ecological disaster. Afterwards, only Flood spores remained, and with no viable biomass to feed on, the Flood effectively starved. Following the Array's activation, Mendicant Bias was captured and brought to the Ark by Offensive Bias. The Isodidact held a formal trial for the Ancilla, sentencing it to be entombed beneath the Ark's desert. Until the day humanity, the Reclaimers, returned to the Ark to claim the mantle, Mendicant Bias would be allowed only one thought. Atonement. Over the next several decades, the Forerunner Station on the Ark would reseed the galaxy with the life that had been saved. But for their great crime, they enacted a great journey, leaving the galaxy, never to interfere again. One Forerunner remained behind, however, the former First Counselor, Splendid Dust, having himself composed and placed as Monitor of the Ark, designated 000 Tragic Solitude. In the millennia that followed, the Ark and the Halos would go largely undisturbed. In that time, Tragic Solitude forgot about his time as Splendid Dust. He also fully integrated himself with the Ark's systems, in a way, becoming the Ark itself. During this time, a fragment of Mendicant Bias managed to free itself from its imprisonment. It attached itself to a Forerunner keyship and headed for Earth, hoping to bring humanity to the Ark and finally atone. However, it ended up crashing on John Jirquam, the San Shayum homeworld. This accident would eventually allow the Sanshayum to leave their homeworld, discover the Songheili, and form the Covenant. On September 19, 2552, the human cruiser Pillar of Autumn, having been pursued from Reach by the fleet of Particular Justice, discovered Installation 04. The ensuing battle resulted in the destruction of the Halo Ring, after which the Ark began the process of building a replacement. Just over a month later, on November 2nd, the Human Covenant War found its way to Installation 05, Delta Halo, where a massive flood outbreak had occurred over the millennia due to the negligence of the installation's monitor. It was here that the Covenant began to fracture as their leadership tried to remove the warrior Sanghili from power and replace them with the Jiral Hanai. It was also discovered that the Great Jury, the culmination of the Covenant, was a lie. The Halo itself was nearly activated, but at the last minute the activation index was removed from the core. A signal was sent out from Installation 05, putting the remaining Halos on standby, now they could only be activated from the Ark, and the only way to get to the Ark was the portal on Earth. Humanity and the Sanghili formed an alliance to stop the Covenant and the activation of the Rings. While most Sanghili remained at Installation 05 to call the Flood outbreak, human forces returned to Earth to fight over the portal, believed at the time to be the Ark itself. Though supported by John 117, the Master Chief, and the Sanghili Arbiter, human forces could not stop the activation of the portal, which opened a slipspace passage to the Ark. Upon touching down, the fragment of Mendicant Bias on the Forerunner keyship reunited with the rest of itself. When Humanity and the Sanghili, aided by 343 Guilty Spark, chased the Covenant to the Ark, and war broke out once again, Mendicant did what little it could to aid Humanity. On the Ark, the Prophet of Truth attempted to activate the Halo Array, while Humanity and the Sanghili attempted to stop him. As they began the final push, the Flood suddenly appeared over the Ark, the infected Holy City of High Charity carrying it as the station crashed on the Ark's surface. The Master Chief and Arbiter were sent to eliminate Truth and stop the activation of the Halo Rings. To their surprise, however, the Flood offered to help. With little other choice and time being of the essence, they accepted. With the Flood's help, the Chief was able to deactivate the Rings, and the Arbiter managed to kill Truth, shattering the Covenant. However, as they did, the Flood turned on them. After escaping the Citadel, the Chief and Arbiter discovered a replacement Halo Ring, and with the aid of Guilty Spark, planned to light it to eliminate the Flood. While the Arbiter aided in the evacuation of human and Sanghili forces and Spark prepared the new ring, the Chief recovered Cortana, his AI companion, from the remains of High Charity. She had been left there during the Battle of Installation 05 as a contingency plan against the Flood and the ring itself, but was stopped by the Flood's compound intelligence, the Grave Mind. Reunited with her Spartan, she, the Chief, the Arbiter, and Sergeant Avery Johnson made their way to the new ring. In the control room, they prepared to activate the ring, but were informed by Spark that it was not yet ready. 
With time short due to the Flood's presence, Spark's warning was ignored and Spark turned hostile. The Monitor was seemingly destroyed by the Master Chief, but Johnson died as a result of Spark's eye beam The Master Chief activated the ring and he, Arbiter, and Cortana made a break for their ticket off. The UNSC forward unto dawn. They made it just in time. As the ring fired, killing off the Flood and any potential food, it shook itself to pieces and severely damaged the Ark and its Monitor. The subspace portal from the Ark to Earth also became unstable, causing the Forward Unto Dawn to rip itself in half. While the Arbiters half continued onto Earth, the Chief and Cortana were spit out in an unknown section of the galaxy. Following the Battle of the Ark, the galaxy entered a new era, as some Sanghili sought peace with humanity, while Covenant Remnant factions sought to continue the fight. Meanwhile on the Ark, a signal was reaching out. Detected by Oni in early 2553 via probes sent to the Ark, a ship, the UNSC Rubicon, was dispatched in December of 2553 to find the source of the signal. Around August of 2554, Rubicon arrived and deployed remote contact teams to the Ark's surface. Only one made it back and carried with them the damaged carapace of 343 Guilty Spark. Now, however, the Monitor's dormant memories locked away by the Isodidact had returned. Believing he had found evidence of the Librarian's survival, he took control of the Rubicon and headed for an unknown destination. Meanwhile on the Ark, a member of the remote contact teams was alive, but just barely. Bobby Kodiak, leader of RTC Broadside. 000 Tragic Solitude offered to save the man, and he accepted. Over several months, Bobby was healed, though the treatment left him a disfigured cyborg. Unknown to Solitude or anyone else, an AI called Curator had also been stranded on the Ark. Trapped in its systems with no way to communicate or interact, it began cataloging the information it found in the Ark's data stores, having nothing else to do. In March of 2555, Solitude used Bobby to start an activation sequence for the remaining Halo installations. Humanity and the Sangheili, the two species now cooperating, discovered this activation sequence and began plans to return to the Ark. With the help of a Huragak that had once worked on the Forerunner keyship that had originally opened the portal at Earth, the two species were able to reactivate it and send a joint species team through. Upon arriving at the Ark, the ship found itself under attack by Retriever Sentinels and crashed on the Ark's surface. There, they again found themselves under attack, this time by local fauna and the Ark's artificial defenses. These included standard aggressor Sentinels and a type of Armager. However, the team was eventually able to shut down the Halo Rings and, with the help of Bobby Kodiak, destroy Tragic Solitude. Sadly, not everyone made it, including Bobby and one Dr. Henry Lamb. Soon after, though, bases were established and the UNSC began studying the Ark, even planning to repair it. Over the next three years, the UNSC experienced no serious hostile activity on the Ark and managed to restore the installation to its former glory. However, at the end of October to early November of 2558, the portal to Earth shut down. Communication cut off. A month after that, a mysterious brute-led force known as the Banish arrived. They slaughtered local UNSC forces and began taking the Ark for all it was worth. Now, after 28 years adrift, the Spirit of Fire finds itself over the Ark. As the crew awakens to a galaxy that left them behind, they can only wonder where they are now and how they got there. Answers that will only come in time. Hey guys, thanks for watching. If you liked this video, please consider giving it a thumbs up, subscribing, and sharing it around. You are the reason I get to keep doing this, so thank you, profusely thank you. If you want to dive deeper into Halo's lore, head over to the Halo Archive. It's a lore-based community that welcomes everyone from experts to rookies. No matter what your working knowledge, you'll be sure to find a friend and a good time.